Hi, and welcome to an overview of all the different versions of Love Letter, a popular game by Seji Kanai. These are the standard editions of Love Letter. The original Love Letter that came out in 2012 came out in this um, envelope. I don't have the original version, but I have a version that is very similar to the original version that came out later. So the original version <coughs> had the princess, the minister, the general, the wizard, the priestess, the knight, the clown, and the soldier. Then also in 2012 AEG came out with their version and they have changed a couple of things mostly they have changed um, the names of most of the cards and the design but they've also changed one particular card I'll go into that later so they have um, the princess the countess the king the prince the handmaid the Baron, the Priest, and the Guard. So the things that they've changed uh, is the Countess. So the Minister's um, effect is different to the Countess effect. All the other effects are the same. So the Minister says something like, um, if you have more than 12, um, the strength of 12 in your hand, which you would have together with the prince, the king, or the princess, then you're out of the round. While the counter says if you have this card and the king or prince in your hand, you must discard this card. So having this card and the king or prince in your hand is actually the same as having 12 or more in your hand. Um, because together with the princess, you would discard the counters anyway, and there's no second countess. But the, the big difference is that you stay in the round. So that's the biggest difference. Uh, I guess another big difference is they've added some tokens. So the original game only had, well, it was only one game. You play it and then you play it again. But uh, with introducing the tokens, AEG, um, I guess made some kind of tournament style game out of it where you play multiple rounds and whoever has uh, in, in this version if you have or depending on the player count like with four people if you have four tokens then you've won the game um, if you're interested <laughs> you might notice there's a princess there's a prince and there's a king and you might wonder where's the queen well um, because AEG made this part of um, a shared world. There are five games in this world um, and this is one of them and the previous game that came out before Love Letter had the Queen imprisoned so that's why the Queen is not there. <laughs> yeah so that's the AEG version of Love Letter. Um, then in Japan, Arclight came out with, it, with its own version, which was based on the design of the original. So th those are the cards I'm actually using here instead of the original. So those were the Arclight version, or was the Arclight version. Um, but they've added a couple of things and made a few things different. So first of all, they've also added tokens. So they thought, oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. So they're tokens you can use, you know, in a similar way that the rules are a little bit different in terms of how many tokens everyone gets, but it's also designed in a way that you can play multiple games and uh, not just one. Um, they've also added the counters. So, and you can swap this out instead of the minister. So you can play either with the minister or with the counters. Um, then they've <coughs> added a couple of alternative princesses <coughs> so alternative eights um, that do different things like 
one makes you return to the game, another one makes you end the game immediately for everyone. Um, one just makes you lose the game if you end up with it in your hand at the end. And then there's a male version, which is the same as the standard princess, it's just a male version. And they've also upped the player count, so you can play with up to five players with the king. The king doesn't have a number, but an X. And the uh, when you draw the king, you're out of the round. So it's a bit brutal, but at least it means when you play with five players, it's not much longer <laughs> than a, a usual game. And then in 2018, Zeman bought the license for Love Letter from AEG and their version is also different, they, they've enhanced it, so they have, um, hey, where's the princess? Where's the princess? <laughs> So they redesigned everything and kept the names and they've also added some cards. So from one to five, everything is the same. You have guards, although you, you actually have one guard more. There are six guards for up, if, if you want to play with up to six players. You have the priest, the baron, the handmaid and the prince. But then they've added a new card, the chancellor at the number six where the king used to be. So the card, chancellor is draw two cards, keep one card and put your other two on the bottom of the deck in any order. So, but they've kept the king, the countess and the princess and what they've done is they've just increased the numbers. So the king is now a seven, the countess is an eight and the princess is a nine. In addition to that, they've also added two cards that are zero. So there's the spy. At the end of the round, if you're the only player in the round who played or discarded a spy, gain one favor token. Yeah. There were quite a lot of different versions of Love Letter um, and the ones that are pure rethemes, meaning they haven't changed anything about the gameplay the effects are all the same, but they've changed the theme, they've changed often the names, uh, always the design. Um, so here are all of those that are really haven't changed any of the rules. So there is a um, wedding edition, which has the same, nearly the same design as the AEG version. Um, just where the princess is the bride. Then there is... Um, Legend of the Five Rings, which like a Japanese theme. There is Letters to Santa, a Christmas themed version. There's a Munchkin themed version called Munchkin Loot Letter. There is a version that is based on a Romanian fairy tale, Harap Al Continuo. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. Um, then there's a Thai version. There is a version, it's called Pummel Einhorn, the super cookie, which is a kid's version, a German kid's version. And finally there is like a different, there was a print and play version that the uh, Seaman put out on April Fool's Day, but it's nonetheless a proper complete game that you can play, but they've um, made things a bit more modern. <laughs> like here, the princess is shown taking a selfie. <laughs> there were lots of versions of Love Letter, which changed just a little bit. Um, so here's a version that was part of a compilation of five different games called Princess Wonder. Um, and they had uh, standard stuff, um, except they had, um, so with the eight, seven, six, five, two, 
two, three, two. Um, except they had three princesses to swap out, um, which are also the same ones from uh, the Arclight edition. Um, and they also had alternative win conditions. There is a separate game in the same box that has the same characters and then, then this version of Love Letter. And when you draw one from that, that other deck, you have to win with that character in hand or if you're playing for points, you get two points if they win with that card. Then there's the Ken Nimura edition. Uh, they have uh, the princess, the minister, and so on. And they have two additional cards. So there's the X, the, the king. Um, and the seven, so the countess to swap out with the minister if you want to. Then this is the Gentosha Education Edition. The one of the very few who don't come with any tokens. <laughs> um, so they... So I guess the first interesting thing is that these cards are actually plastic cards and they're quite thick. More like playing with credit cards. <laughs> I guess that makes them very uh, sturdy. Um, yeah, they have, well, eight, seven, six, and so on. More Japanese themed. And in addition to the standard, they have. The eight, uh, which is just the male version of the princess, so you can swap them out. They have this another seven, so you can swap countess and minister. They have a zero, which is a scribe. And if this card is in your discard pile, add two to the strength of your hand at the end of the game. So you can add this to the game. There's another one you can add with a question mark instead of a number. It's a yukai. Um, this card is a copy of the last card in your discard pile. Then we have um, Land of the Lustrous, which is based on um, a comic. It was actually part of a special edition of a comic. And that's also has also quite interesting cards because these are also made of plastic and they have like these jewel effect on them so they have like glittering when you hold them um they have also some additional cards so generally they have you know the eight the seven interestingly six five um the cards that are in there multiple times have different names in this case These are the guards, basically. Um, so the additional cards is there's a two. And if this card's in, card is in one of the player's hands at the end of the game, the player with the lowest number is the winner. So you can swap that in if, if you want to play a bit, little bit differently. And then there are two different sevens. So one is basically the countess and the other one um, is in... I guess a better version than a handmade. Um, you will not drop out until the end of the game if that's in your discard pile. And then there's the X, which is like, like the king, um, and a zero. So this zero means um, at the end of the game, this card has a strength of seven. So you can add the X and the zero if you want to play with five players. Then there's an Adventure Time version. So things they've changed here is if you win with a four, you gain two tokens. And the other thing is if you attack someone with a five and the 
the person you attack um, discards the other five, then you win the round. Okay, and then there are a couple of versions that I don't own. Um, So there's the Batman version, which apart from the standard versions is the most popular one, the one that most people own. Um, here one, cha one thing they've changed is if you guess with a one and you guess correctly, then you get a token. There's the Hobbit. Um, it has... Um, two different threes, so one is the standard Baron, um, but that is Legolas, but if you get Tauriel, that's the, the opposite of Legolas, that means the lower card wins. And they also have an additional zero, the one ring, that means at, at the end of the round, this card counts as a seven. There is a Russian Star Wars version. It changes the same thing as, as the Hobbit, as you have as three, you have R two D two and C three P O, and one of them means the lower card wins. They have an additional one, so a sixth one, which has the first half of it is the same as the guard, except if they do not have that number that you've guessed, you may try again, and if you fail again, you are out of the round. Then there is Game Center C X. Um, it adds eight challenge cards, so they have different numbers on them, um, and that's the strength that you have to beat per round. And when you beat that cha those challenge cards, or that, that one card every round, oh, well, there are different cards every round, you get extra points. There is Princess Princess Ever After, which is nearly the same as the Z-Man version. So the princess is a nine, or not the princess, well, the, the equivalent of the princess. Um, but when you play the chancellor, you gain a token if the other chancellor was played. Then there's Archer, once you go blackmail. That actually changes a bit more, it makes it interesting because in the beginning of the game you always discard a card, and that version of Love Letter does something with that card that is discarded. So they include four cards that do something with it. So um, their version of the two, the priest, um, says name a card other than one. Um, and then peek at the reserve card. And if you find that card, you win the round. The, the other four says um, either ignore all effects from other players, or so the standard handmade, um, until your next turn, or you may peek at the reserve card. Their version of the six says um, choose any player, including yourself, to discard his or her hand and replace it with the reserve card, and then replace the reserve card with the top card of the deck. And their version of the seven says without looking, collect each player's hand and the reserve card, shuffle them together, and redeal them out. So quite different. And then there's um, a Japanese version, um, also Matsu-san. So that changes all the ones. So instead of five ones, we here have six. And they have all different names. And when you guess with a one, you can guess a name and not a number. So you can guess actually other ones, which you can't do with the other versions. Um, yeah, you can play with up to six players, and they also have six character cards, which are the same as the, the cards for the ones. And if you have that one in your hand uh, that you have as a character, then your strength is actually nine. They add a couple of cards. So they, they add, an, add a zero for five players, which is the same as the X in, in other games, in other versions. And if you want to play with six players, then they have duplicated the numbers two to six. 
and the other one here um, another thing where they've changed a bit if you want to play with more than four players um, especially the, the standard version um, then there's something called big big love letter it's a way to combine two versions or two sets of love letter to play with up to eight people so if you want to play with eight you add all of them together twice so two sets except for the princess and the countess everything else is in there double the amount double the usual amount these are versions of love letter that change the gameplay quite significantly so first of all there's the premium edition it has the same design as um, the AG version except they have tarot size cards um, and much nicer uh, tokens and a much nicer box and sleeves and they also have 16 more cards um, so these 16 cards which are t 10 different more characters um, you can add them to the game to play with uh, five to eight players um, so they can change things quite significantly also because they're suddenly more players or different characters um, with the same strength so there are two sevens for example or the two different twos it's the priest and the cardinal and instead of the baron as the three there's also the baroness and so on they all have different uh, effects so then we have lovecraft letter Um, this version is quite similar in uh, in quality as the premium version. It's also the same size box, so quite big, considering that the original was just a tiny pouch um, with a like magnetic clasp and so on. These are also tarot sized um, and quite nice tokens. Poker chips. Um, yeah, so with this game you could also play um, the base game just with a Cthulhu theme. Um, they also have all the same. Let's see, eight, seven, six, two fives, two fours, two threes, two twos, and five ones. But in addition to that, they also have. Um, nine more cards that go from well eight to one and then they have a zero and they're the insane cards so you can use their insane effect on the certain circumstances they all have the, s the same effects then that the standard love letter cards um, so the eight has the princess effect the seven the countess and so on um, except that they in addition to that, they have this insane effect. And you can play that if you have an insane card already in your discard pile. Um, but when you have an insane card in your discard pile, you need to do a sanity check before you draw a new card. That means just <clears throat> discarding um, cards from the deck and uh, as many as you have insane cards in your discard. And if you draw an insane card, you're out of the round. Um, yeah, interestingly, there are different ways how you can win. Um, so you either win by getting two sanity tokens, um, which you get whenever you win a round without having used any insane effect or insane cards. Um, or three insanity tokens and you get the insanity token whenever you have an insanity card in your deck or have one with any um, but there's also another way um, with Cthulhu you can also win 
That is, if you have two or more insanity cards in your discard pile, you win the game. Um, also interesting that the ties are resolved quite differently to any other version, because in case of a tie, all tied players are knocked out. That's Lovecraft letter. Um, then we have Love Letter from YZQ, or that's, that stands for Yasakura, um, which was another one that was part of a comic. Um, um, of a special edition of a comic, so that was part of, part of that. So this is quite interesting because you play cooperatively in teams, two to four players against one. So there is one player who um, is sort of the, the evil guy, and then there are four others, and they you get different character cards for them. Um, and you, those four or two to four have to play together to win against the evil guy. Um, so they are, and they, they all have special powers. Um, to know, to, to understand some of the special powers, you need to know that, um, so they have a standard deck with all the, you know, eight, seven, six, and so on. Uh, standard love letter. But then there are also some special cards. Um, there are, I don't know what to call them, tuning cards. Um, similar to Lovecraft letter, really, that um, are numbered one to eight. There's one of each. Um, but their standard effect when you play any of these, is that you're out of the game, or out of the round, rather. And they have a special tuning effect that you can use under certain circumstances. Um, so I will go through those in a bit. Um, so the engine character, the evil guy, um, he um, can always use the tuning effect. Um, this one, so on the office side, apparently they're working in an office. I, I don't quite understand the, the background. Um, so this person, um, once per game, they can unconditionally use the tuning ability, but they cannot use the tuning ability by the way all the others can. So all the others can use the tuning ability by just flipping a guard in their discard pile. Um, but then this person um, can see all the cards dealt to engine at the beginning of the game which is another interesting thing is that so at the beginning of the game the engine player who who plays against all the others he gets um, the num the several cards not just one everyone gets one but this player engine gets the number of players minus one cards and then he chooses one of the cards as their hand and put the rest to the side. And whenever they drop out of the game, they can just use one of the set aside cards and then be back in the game. So yeah, this character can see all the cards, so they know what they are. Then this character, once per game, and on their turn, they can swap their hand with another player's hand or the card from a, a card from the discard pile. And then we have this one who, once per game, if they're knocked out of the round, they can draw a card from the deck and just return to the game. Um, generally, um, so the engine player has lost when they drop out and don't have any set-aside cards left, um, or if all players are still in the game and their hands to guard to together, their hands are higher than the hands they have plus the one they have set aside. 
And yeah, whoever wins gets, whoever, whichever side wins, gets one token card. Um, and whoever gets two token cards wins the overall game. Interestingly, they don't have tokens as such, they have token cards, which I guess makes it a bit easier <laughs> with the printing and having everything together. Um, yeah, so the special abilities are quite, well, interesting, they're all a bit more drastic. Um, so the one, when you use the tuning ability of the, the special other deck that you, you all shuffle together, is um, so you name a number other than one and so on, so it's the same as the guard, but you can do it uh, and guess what they are, but you can do it three times, or up to three times. Then um, you can choose a card from another player's discard pile <clears throat> and add it to your hand. Then add a card to that player's play area. You can choose another player. You secretly compare hands with them, so that's the same as the Baron. Um, and the, the, the player with the lower number is knocked out. But you may repeat this up to two times. So everything is a bit more powerful. The four um, is the same as the handmade, except if you're knocked out of the round while this card is in your discard pile, you may flip this card, draw a card from the deck and return to the game. The five's tuning ability is a collect all players' hands and redistribute them as you like. The sixth um, tuning ability is choose another player, take their hand and put it into play, and then the other player is treated as if they have the strength of zero because they don't have a card, and then their turn is just drawing a card, and that's it, and they can't, can't play anything that turn. The seven, um, choose another player, they are knocked out of the round, <laughs> just like that. And the eight, you do the same, except you can do that with as many players as you like. So you choose as many players as you like and then they are knocked out of the round. So in addition to this, um, they also have some additional cards. Um, so we have the standard other seven you, that you can swap out. So you can choose either the countess or, or the minister, basically. They also have... Um, uh, another four, six, and nine. So the four is a, like a better handmade. If you're knocked out of a round while well, this card is in discard, you may flip this card, draw a card from the deck, and return to the game. The six is um, sort of like a mixture between a priest and a king. So you choose another player, look at their hand, and then you may trade hands with them. So quite powerful. And then there's a nine. Um, at the end of a round, this card counts as a three. So these three cards are added to the game if you want to play with five players. So next up we have Danganronpa, which is I think also based on some kind of comic or TV series or something. And that only plays four player. Um, so all of these cards have two effects. There's a hope effect and a despair effect. And then also all of them have a hope or despair symbol on it. Um, the way this works is you play the effect um, of the previously played card. So if um, someone had played this card and this one shows the despair effect, so meaning next round you need to play the despair effect of your next card. Um, interestingly, these are all very different, so the base um, effects are all the same, but the so the hope effects are all the same as basic love letter, but the despair effects are all, like all five guards have five different uh, effects in there as their despair effect. 
which is also one of the reasons why I won't go through all, all of them, because it's quite a lot. Um, some, some of the cards ask you to make a fate check, and you generally do that by shuffling these three cards. So there are two hope and one despair card, and if you shuffle them, you just draw one, and that decides, is it hope or despair? Oh, it's hope. <laughs> um, they have also some alternative cards to swap out. It's another four, four five, six, and seven. Um, and interestingly, they also have a way of determining the first player. If you have the the blood stained letter, then you're the first player. <laughs> um, I've got Tohu bomb letter. That plays up to five players. Um, this also doesn't have the standard tokens. It does have some tokens here, but they're used for other things. And they instead have um, token cards that have um, values on them from 200, 300, 400, 500, to up to 600. So you shuffle them and whoever wins a round takes one. So at the end, it's not just who, who got the most cards, but who has the most uh, points. So you could... If you get a 600 and 500 and someone else has a 200, 300 and another 300, obviously the one with just two cards can win. Um, this game also has five different characters with special abilities. Um, so you have these bomb tokens that you use the bomb tokens to use your special abilities. So you have things like, um, so all of these have a standard ability and a bomb ability. The standard ability they can use all the time and the bomb ability only when they can discard a bomb token. So this one starts with one bomb token and they can always eliminate another player. Um, no, sorry. If they eliminate another player, they get one bomb token. And if they want to use the bomb ability and they start with one bomb token um when they are out of the round they can just take a card and come back up um the standard ability of this one is um when you use a guard you can guess up uh, two times this one starts with three bomb tokens and their bomb ability is um you can add the effect of a discarded card the standard ability is when you use a priest, you get an additional turn, so can look at two people's hands. Um, the bomb ability, and they start with two bombs. You negate the effect when you're targeted and use it against the player who attacked you. Um, when using a card, when using a prince, you look at the top card of the deck before targeting, which is quite useful that's the standard ability of this one they start with three bomb tokens and so when you um you, you can use an effect that applies clockwise to all players and the last one here the standard effect is when using a baron then you treat the strength of your hand as being too greater and the bomb ability is um, at the end of your turn you can choose another player to, to, to eliminate another player and you start with two warm tokens so that's that and then you have the standard um, deck you have an eight that the eight intentionally looks a bit like a B because it's also the boss so in this version of Love Letter, you play six different rounds and every round you play with a different boss and there are six princesses, so that's the standard princess, but you have also then standard seven and six and so on. And then, yeah, you have other other princesses here that, you know, every round you, you use a different one. 
Um, and most of these are the same, or, well, three of these are the same that we have seen in others, but two others we haven't seen before is at the end of the game, you add two to the strength of your hand, and if you discard this card, you're immediately knocked out of the round, but then you shuffle this card back into the deck. So those are the extra princesses. And then there are also some cards you can swap out. Um, so there's an X, and this is not the standard X effect. I don't speak any Japanese, so I always use Google Translate to understand all of these. And with the help of Google Translate and common sense, I was able to understand everything except this card. I really don't understand what it does because the translation doesn't make any sense and it's contradicting itself. But all the others, um, so there's a nine that, so during the game, this is a zero, but at the end it's a nine, a six means uh, all players pass their hand to the player to the left. And there's a seven, which ah, it's just a countess, so it's the standard countess um, minister thing. That was that. And finally we have a magic examination for which hat. Um, yeah, so they, the deck itself is, again, standard deck with the standard effects, 8, 7, and so on. But then, so these are the magic cards, but then they have two other types of cards. Um, they have character cards. And quest cards. So the quest cards change the win condition. And generally you go through all, so you shuffle them up and you go through all of the eight quests and the winner of the most quests win the game. But if you don't manage to, to fulfill the quest, if there's no winner for one, then you play that quest again and there might not be a winner for one. Because, um, so this one is, means the strongest card wins, and this one, the only remaining player wins. So those two are the two usual win conditions. But um, if you're the only remaining player, then it's not the strongest card, so you have to do it again. Yeah, so you have two, two of these, the strongest card. Then you have here two, uh, the strongest card wins, but cards with an even strength at eight to their strength. And this one is with an odd strength at eight. Um, the strongest combined strength of cards in your discard pile wins. The second strongest card wins. Or the weakest card wins. Although if you have multiple cards that are the weakest, then um, the second weakest card wins. And the character cards give you special abilities. So you have... Um, once per game, at the beginning of your turn, you may replace your hand with a reserve card. At the end of the game, add two to the strength of your hand. Once per game, when targeted, you may negate the effect. Once per game, at the beginning of your turn, swap your hand with a card from your discard pile. And once per game, take another turn. There are a couple of games that are similar to Love Letter, but not quite Love Letter. I call them Love Letter adjacent games. Um, but they you cannot play the base game with them, and some of them play quite differently. So here we have a couple. Um, Infinity Gauntlet. Um, so that's also like a semi-cooperative game where you play... Well, the, the superheroes play against Thanos. So you have, you have one deck for the one, one to five superheroes. So it plays up to six um, 
So on the superhero side, you have one to five players. And yeah, the main... All of these games play similarly to Love Letter in the way that you have one card and then you play one card. No, sorry, you have one card, then you draw one and then you play one of the two. Um, but most other things are quite different here. So it doesn't have player elimination, which is interesting. Um, but the main effect you have here is really like playing the Baron and you sort of try to knock each other out. Um, and when you have knocked like Thanos down, he goes down one life point and when you've knocked the superhero down, you you knock them down one life point and whoever um, is still alive while one of the two um, is dead <laughs> here at the bottom of this, this chart, then... Uh, well, the other side has won. Has won. Um, yeah, so it's it's um, so when it, when it says you fight Thanos, what you do is you show your hand, and when you've got when you've got a higher number, then you've knocked the other one out. Um, but you can also get extra points, isn't there? These what's it called power tokens or something like that. Um, which give you two more to the strength of your card. Um, and yeah, and Thanos has yeah, a deck of his own. So he has six different uh, stones. And he wants to either be the last one standing or collect all of the stones, either um, played or in his hand or, or both. Um, so Thanos plays his deck once, but he always has two cards in his hand. So when it's his turn, he takes one more card and then he decides, which is also interesting. Um, but the superheroes, when they have finished with the deck, they actually reshuffle it. And so they don't run out of the deck. Yeah, so that's quite different to Love Letter, but it has as a subtitle, a Love Letter game. Um, because, yeah, certain things are similar enough, other things are quite different. Then we have Star Wars, well, Java's Palace, that's what it's called. It also has the subtitle of A Love Letter Game, and that's closer to Love Letter. You also have um, two different factions in the game, the Rebels and the Palace, but it's not that you play against each other. So um, it's just, so these are the Rebels, or you usually, usual Star Wars people, and uh, the palace. So there are two different decks, but they are shuffled together. So everyone plays from this one deck. It's more similar to Love Letter. Um, but they have different effects. Like like a third or half of them are similar enough to Love Letter, but others are different. And the way how factions come into play is, well, partly with, with what the effects are, but also um, it has four agenda cards, so that's actually a bit similar to the magic examination for Witch Hat, which has uh, these quest cards, so they're similar to the quest cards, as it changes the win condition. So this is the standard one, highest number in hand wins the round, but the win condition might also be highest number of the rebel and palace in hand both win the round, or highest sum of... I don't know which is which. One of them two, of those two is in play area wins the round, or most of the other in play area wins the round. Or highest sum versus most different. So that's Jabba's Palace, and there is uh, Zeno, which is a quite quite similar to Love Letter. It's designed by someone else, but lists. Seiji Kanai as a co-designer, uh, because it's based on Love Letter. It's basically, it plays very similar to ba Love Letter, except it has two ones. Um, well, two of everything. It starts from one up to eight, and then it has one nine and one ten. And none of these cards have any text on them, and the game doesn't come with any rules, but um, the rules are all online. And yeah, so it plays very similar Lots of the cards have love letter-ish effects and some are a bit different. Yeah. Um, and finally we have Lost Legacy, which is 
uh, a game Sijika and I designed like a year after a love letter and it plays basically the same so you know you have uh, you start with a card take one card and then play one of the two and it also has characters from eight from one to eight except the um, the numbers are different so there's one 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 two one three one four one five two sixes three sevens three eights and then also three x's and the main thing here is that the wind condition is quite different there's still the same wind conditions is uh, if you're the last one standing you win the game but if you're not um whoever finds the lost legacy wins the game so this is you you need to find or know where the five is the five is always the lost legacy um and you do that by at, at the end the one with the lowest card starts to guess or, or no or just say i think the five is there and if, if it is there then they win the round um Also interesting that this game does something with the card that gets set aside in the beginning, same as with Love Letter. You know, you shuffle and then take one card out and that gets set aside. And in this game, that's called The Ruins, and some of the cards actually interact with The Ruins. And The Lost Legacy can either be in The Ruins, and there can also be multiple cards in The Ruins, or it can be in someone else's hands, or it can be in your own hand. Um, you cannot discard it, though. <laughs> Yeah, and there are also multiple versions. So the original version came with two of these decks that all have different... So there's, there was a second deck that um, has just different effects on them. And there are, I think, overall about ten of them. Actually more than ten, but um, I think nine that you can commercially get of these. So it's also, also interesting how this went a different route than Love Letter. <laughs> And finally, I just want to talk a little bit about upcoming versions. So, Love Letter is 10 years old. Whee! And Arclight, the Japanese publisher of, of Love Letter, um, has planned a couple of special editions to celebrate its 10th birthday. So... Um, there will be a second edition of Love Letter with um, new cards and also sort of half new, half old design. Um, there is the 10th anniversary edition. They plan to put all the different cards of and rules of all the different versions of Love Letter into one box um, with the same design. So it's, you know, you can play them all together or, you know. And, and then there's a third one that we know the least about, which is stories, love letter stories, which will be a story-driven game based on love letter. That was an overview of all the different love letter versions. Thanks for watching.